This is part one of a multi-part series on the REC BMS 4S Active BMS. Today we're going to introduce you to the components and explain what they do. Now the REC BMS is a very unique type of BMS. The feature that really sets it apart from the competition is the fact that it has an active balancer built in, which means instead of just dissipating power from one cell to balance it to another, it's actually going to move that power from the high cell to the low cell, and it doesn't do this all the time, it only does it at the top end, so it's not like a QNBBM active balancer, for example, which has the ability to unbalance cells. This makes it very suitable for large packs, upwards of over a thousand amp hours. Now this is one of my favorite BMS's as well because it has CAN bus communication so this is going to work with your wake speed uh, external regulator, a Victron system using like a Serbo GX, and uh, many more other systems. Now on the table I have the BMS itself, it's pretty small, it just has a port around the back not much to see here. And then we have the wiring harness over here, which we're going to get a little bit deeper into in just a moment. And then another thing that comes in the box, there are some spare fuses. Don't worry about these. These only come in if you've done something terribly wrong. But uh, yeah, just keep those in a safe place for the time being. Here on the plug side of the REC, you can see the main plug. Now there's usually a sticker that covers this with a warning to check all of the cell voltage and polarities before connecting. So that's why there's a little bit of residue here on the sides. But this has all of the pins to do all of our IO communication. And then also on this side of the BMS, there are two little lights here, a red light and a green light. That's gonna tell you if there's an error or fault that has occurred. And aside from that, that is about it on this side. Mounting this REC BMS is made easy with these little corner brackets. There's a slot here on the side, and those just slip in and kind of lever on in. And then if I turn this around, you'll see there is a nice spot on there to put a screw in, so that way you can mount it to a board or panel or something like that. Here on the bottom side of the BMS is your serial number. Make sure to write this serial number down before you mount this to any surface because this will come in to be important when you get to the point of programming the BMS. This is the connector that all the wires go to. This is like an automotive style connector. It does have a really nice rubber O-ring in here so that way you get a good seal so that you don't have to worry about any moisture coming in and attacking your terminals. And that's about it for this end, but let's look at what is attached to the other end. So we can break this harness down into two sections. The first section being all of the small black wires, and then there are the gray wires. Now attached to the gray wires are a few different things. Let's look at these smaller ones first. First thing here is the temperature probe. Now this is actually a digital temperature probe and you can actually splice on and add more temperature probes. Not going to get too deep into that right now, but if you needed more temperature sensing, you can certainly add more. Next thing here is two little ring terminals. These are to connect to your current shunt so that the BMS can measure the current in and out of the battery pack. Then there's the power switch. This turns on and off the BMS. You just flip it on or off and that'll allow you to turn the BMS off if you need to change something and it, it definitely will open the main contactor and stop all communication with a computer or other CAN bus device. And then there are two DB9 connectors. One of these is male and one of them is female and these are for your RS-485 and CAN bus communication. Next thing are all of these small black wires. Now this can be broken up into two bunches. There are the long wires here, and these are for your connections to your cells. So cell 1 negative, cell 1 positive, cell 2 positive, cell 3 positive, and cell 4 positive. And that is it for the long ones. And then there are quite a few other ones, and these are your relay control wires and optocouplers out. Um, we're going to get more into this on our next video where we get to wiring it in but um, that is what those wires are for. These are your main relay control wires. 
there are just a few more accessories. The first one here is the current shunt. Now this is going to be used for measuring how many amps are going in and out of your battery pack. This is essentially a precision resistor, so the voltage drop across the two terminals will drop a certain voltage that the REC BMS can interpret. Now we have 500 amp shunts available, but you can expand this to whatever shunt you want. And if your system already has, for example, a Victron Smart shunt, which is not entirely necessary, uh, you can piggyback off of an existing shunt and just program the BMS to correspond appropriately. The next thing here is the PC programming cable, and it comes with a little box here. This has the manual and the software for programming the BMS. I can flip this over and you can see the end here that has the USB connection on it. This is not always required, but a good idea to have, so that way you can change any settings uh, in the BMS. This is the only way to change the settings. There is no app or Bluetooth connectivity at this point that will allow you to do that uh, settings change. This is a TE Connectivity KiloVac contactor. Now this is rated for 500 amps continuous current. However, you can even have a surge up to 2000 amps and it can successfully break it. Now you're not gonna get the best lifespan out of this, but if you did have an emergency situation, this contactor has got you covered. If I spin it around back, there is a block on here you'll see. This is an economizer circuit, which really helps reduce the current draw of this contactor once it's in engaged. It drops that down quite a bit. This is the pre-charge delay and this has a very important task. Essentially when it receives a signal on the BMS input, which is the third pin down from the top, it will provide power from the system plus to the battery plus so it essentially bypasses the contactor but it does it through a resistor so if you have an inverter with large capacitors it's going to charge those capacitors up now this specific model is a variable delay so it can do two seconds four seconds eight seconds or 11 seconds so it's going to give it that time delay to charge up the capacitors and then fire the main contactor um, which will then you know give full power to the rest of your system this is great to prevent a huge inrush from the low resistance of lithium iron phosphate batteries which can even possibly cause damage to your inverter so you definitely want one of these and then finally we have this cable here this is the CAN bus to Victron cable so this will plug into your Serbo GX and there's a little terminator in here for the unused CAN bus port and this will allow the REC BMS to fully communicate with your Victron system so yeah if you're running Victron make sure to get one of these that about sums it up for the introduction to the REC BMS ecosystem stay tuned to the next video where we get into the nitty-gritty of getting this stuff hooked up